Hey folks, Carl here. Gonna be working on this turd burglar. So, a few things I need to finish up still are speedometer cable and tack. The old speedometer cable will not work. So, got this one from S&P Automotive. I think they're halfway local to me. Uh, stupid heater. Yeah, it's gonna be loud, but we'll live. All right, first things first, this has an electronic speed sensor, the transmission, it's located. Right down there, where that plug is, and uh, the sensor comes apart in two sections. This is the electronic portion, and then there's the actual gear and assembly that goes through the transmission to register the speed. This cable allows you to go directly on it, directly into it, I believe, and then this side gets fished up through the firewall and into the back of the gauge cluster. So I've already got that side undone. I'm gonna start getting the old cable out and then get to the gauge cluster. All right, I don't wanna do that. Yeah, it might be beneficial for us when we pull the steering wheel. So this style steering wheel, you just take this cover, pull it off. There's two wires. Figure out the orientation of them. Those are your horn wires. Black on the left, brown on the right. So that's all. Put that aside. Then because this has no airbag, I won't get punched in the face. So now I want that big nut off. Simply 24 millimeter socket and the impact gun. Next, I had to figure out how to get all this off. Pull these levers off the controls. Make sure you don't lose them. And this basically comes out. Undo the uh, wiring connection for the blower motor fan speed. And then, undo the gauges. Are these all? Switch blanks all come out, and the switches come out on their own. I don't know about this cluster yet. This plug was annoying, it just pulls out, either pry or a screwdriver kind of pry it out. This one, the tab broke, which I'm kind of annoyed by, but brittle hard plastic. This is the illumination, this is blower motor speed. So now I gotta figure out how to get out. Don't be a dildo and lose half your screws, because then you're gonna have a saggy cluster and it's gonna be sad. And you don't wanna be sad. You wanna wanna be happy, right? Nah, I like being sad. Rip. You zoom it in, I can see it. Well, yeah. So I got the gauge cluster out. I have to undo this. There's tangs on both sides. And then it'll basically slip out if you get the uh, speedometer cable loose. I gotta get in here and actually fix the uh, odometer because the car does not actually have 906, the 1,785 miles. The uh, odometer just broke. Pull the ECM out just to. Uh Fish my cable through easier. So it should be in there and should be able to get to it nice and easy. While I'm here, I'm debating on tapping into this for uh, tax signal reasons. I don't know who Sal is, but I love his magic box. This thing will uh, allow me to convert the digital tax signal from the VR6 into the analog tack on the Mark II cluster. So you have to pull this apart and you gotta change some switch set settings in there. But it's all pretty well uh, pretty well explained on the back here. This is another thing that came from S&P Automotive. So, check them out. Also, not sponsored, unfortunately. Sponsor me if you want. Me. Uh, just testing out my connections and I have RPM. I don't have a speedometer in and all that good stuff yet. So, yeah. All right, so I got it all apart. There's a little cover that goes over it. It's kind of lame, but it helps retain it. The uh, blue side of the box, which goes to the tack, goes on the green wire. And then the green side goes to the other side of the green wire. I think that's position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Position 10, so I'm gonna solder and heat shrink that all nicely. 
lay it in the harness. Ground's gonna go to the main ground up underneath the fuse box, and then uh, this is switch power, so it needs to go to switch power. So I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna run that, and I think it's gonna be on the fuse box still. So, then I get to button this all up. Yay. All right, putting the cluster back in is kind of difficult. You need to be able to get your arm back here to pull the uh, cable in towards it, and then you need the cable here, unless you have a friend, to uh, just to turn it. And it's difficult, because the cable wants to get away from you. But I think I got it clicked in and positively secured so I can fight with this getting back in place. And pretty much assemble this, and if I feel up to it, I'll do the power on the ground tonight. No huge deal, but I just kind of want to get, get a move on with this. So I'm going to assemble and give some pointer from there. All right, cluster's in. So, now for the rest. All right, steering wheel's in. It's also a good idea to mark this before you pull it, because it's not, it doesn't have set splines it lives on, but everything's together. Just gotta put the cover back on, tighten the shit out of it, because you don't want this thing coming off going down the road, or else that'd be problems, so. Next, I'm gonna move the engine bay, finish that up, and then possibly the uh, wiring down here. I gotta put it back together, but up here you're gonna wanna make sure the one grommet's here and the other one's back here up and up against the uh, inner firewall. It's up behind my ECM plug, so it's hard to see. And on this end, take this, find a nice clean way to route it down to the transmission. And then I gotta get it in there and start it. Might be a little bit trouble trying to get it squarely in the hole square peg, square hole, and then tighten that nut on the top. There it is, installed between the shifter cables. Best way I can do it without having stress on them. Just uh, snug down that nut. I don't think it needs to be super tight. It's got a seal on it, so that means that part of this should work. So now I got two wires left under the dash to run, and then I'm out of here. So, cool. If you ever want to lighten a gulf, remove the knee bar because that thing weighs like 15 pounds. So now I can get down in here and get the fuse box and get into what I want. So here's the two wires from up top. One's going to be a ground up in the corner. I'll get my flashlight quick. One ground's going to go right up there with that other ground. That's going to be easy. Then the power wire might be a pain, but I might have an idea for that. So it wouldn't be my luck if uh, I fix one thing and something else don't happen. The whole lack of light there wasn't a thing before. <coughs> hey there, forgot. All right, either didn't put the light bulb in right or messed up the ribbon. I hope I didn't do that, but another day I'll fix that. I just got the power in the fuse box in an empty relay slot right now, or it gets key on power, so. Should be good. Tax working. And then um, we'll see how the uh, speedometer does here in a second. Speedometer is currently working. I don't know how accurate it is. I got a GPS app on my phone. I'll check it with here in a minute. So, doesn't feel like 25. Eh, maybe it could be. We'll see. I'm assuming the gauge is off because I didn't set the uh, needle in the right place, so at some point here I'm going to get a new needle and uh, all that stuff. It seems like my uh, instrument cluster, my uh, odometer is actually working, so that's kind of good. The uh, trip odometer is not, which is weird, but I don't really care. As long as the main odometer works again, I'm happy. So yeah, I report on it when I get back home. So the speedometer is about 10 mile an hour off and the odometer still doesn't work because um, apparently in that drive from my work to my house, I've racked up 400,000 miles and counting. So I'm gonna need to, I'm probably just gonna break down and get another gauge cluster. So I have an accurate speedometer again, hopefully. That'd be nice. But other than that, it's nice knowing engine RPM, even though I can only half see it so yeah well that's about it for this video so 
If you like this video, remember, subscribe and stuff, and like and stuff, and comment and stuff. So, uh, alright, catch you later.